Okay, everybody. Here we are in the uh, gorgeous Grovon Mountains in Wyoming in a really pretty herbaceous meadow. And we're going to start the series next on the sorting the most common uh, flowering plant families and just the most common one. And as I've mentioned before, we will be posting a set of keys, and here's a set of keys that works for the most common ones in Montana, Wyoming, and Colorado. And we'll be putting this up online. And, and in a true botanical course or in an exercise, it would become very technical, all the parts you'd have to know, all the things. But I've broken this down to very simple concepts. One, can you count to three, four, five, or more, ten or more, the shape of the flower? Is it radial, meaning circular, like a radius, or is it bilateral, where it has only one way you could cut this flower. You can't cut it in all the pieces of the pie like you can with this one. And are the flowers clustered like this or like this in the sunflower family? Then the basic flower parts, the sepals, the outermost green, at the flower, the base, usually green. Then the petals, which are longer and typically the colored ones. And are they separate, fused? Do they make a, a funnel or a tube? And, and then the position of the ovary is, like if this is the plane, is the ovary above the sepals and petals? And if so, it is called superior. And if it's below, and the sepals and petals are up here, it's inferior. And are the leaves opposite? If that was a stem, they come off this way or alternate, here, 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 and here. And with those six basic features, you can run this key. This one here has, I think, something like 16 or 18 families and you can just work your way down the key using can I count the three four or five is the ovary above below is the flower symmetrical in a radius or or is it bilateral and I can only cut it one way and not each of the pieces of the pie. And with this key, we can get you to the most common family. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna do a series of family clips of each of the most common families that I encounter over the next couple of days, or I can add later, whatever. And we will show each of these families and some of the parts, and we'll insert those. But this is going to be the general approach we're going to take. Okay, aster family, the asteraceae or the compositae. Um, we'll walk through this. We're going to have a key separate for the most common asters, wetland asters, by tribes, uh, that we'll do separately. But right now we're just keying out to a family. Well, in our key, as I mentioned, First lead says, are the parts in three versus fours and fives? Well, in a composite, this is exactly that. This is a composite of a whole series of flowers. This is a flowering head. The actual flowers are this individual, this individual, or all these in the center. So I'm going to take one from the center, a single flower, and here, if I look at this, this flower actually has a tube. Remember we were talking about the uh, petals being fused and forming a tube? Well, the asters have a tube sitting on top of the ovary. So this is an inferior ovary 
It's got a fuse tube, and at the tip, I can count the lobes. And I count one, two, three, four, five. So I have a flower with five parts. All right, so I'm down in the key. Now, the next question is, is it bilateral or radial? And again, radial means, is the flower in a circular shape, or is it shaped in some design, or if I can only cut it, in one direction, one plane versus the circle, I can keep cutting equal parts like a pie. And in this case, these are radial. Any of these flowers in the center here are radial. And so I go there. The next question is about the compound flowering head. And it wants to know if these are tightly clustered. Is it sort of like an umbrella? like this where there's separate little branches holding up clusters just like essentially an umbrella shaped or are they just a solid cluster combined like this and in this case we have a solid one and the next question is do the leaves on the umbrella one wrap around, come down and wrap around the stem and make a swollen part called an okra, or do the leaves just come down and are attached? And these are just attached. So we got to a, in, with the key, we got to this being the sunflower family. Let's quickly review that. So we have parts in five. We went in, we dissected it out. We counted the tops of the lobes, we had five. Then we had a tightly clustered flowering head that wasn't like an umbrella. And the leaves were just attached. They're not wrapped around with a swollen part onto the stem. And we have the asteraceae. And as I said, we will do a separate tribe for the most common tribes in genera. And uh, later booklet. Okay, our next family is the pea family. And to key this out, we'll take a moment here to introduce you to the unique flowering design of the petals on the pea family. In the pea family, it has a large keel, which is a basal or the bottom part of the flower, two side lateral wings, one on each side of the keel, and then on the back top is a banner. And they're more or less unique to the pea family. And when you count them up, you get five. You get a keel, two wings, and a banner. And the banner actually is two fused together. So there's another modification. So it really has four parts, but it's lobed, implying that it's fused. And so when we go to our key, parts in threes, four, fives, and I count this, you could say four, but that banner is actually two petals fused into one. And, and so I get five. And then the next one is, is it radial or bilateral in some shape? Well, this is bilateral. You can only, if you cut it, you can only cut it in one plane to get the a duplicate vertically you can get it but even horizontally if you cut it you don't get the matching top and bottom so this is bilateral and it's parts in five and in our key it says does this flower have the keel the wings and the banner and it does and it keys out to the Fabaceae or the leguminosae the pea family Okay, here I am looking at a flowering family that has the flower tips, the lobes are in five and are bilateral. Remember we talked about circular and bilateral? So I have parts in five. So when I run the key, I don't have three or four, I have five. I can count those lobes. And then I go down and I have opposite leaves 
and a square stem. Almost all mints, not all, but almost all, have a square stem with opposite leaves. And another thing, they a lot of times have the same clusters in the axials or in the base of these leaves. And the leaves are aromatic. This is a very nice aromatic mint. This is a nice filled mint. And this is a member of the mint family. The Pulmoniaceae, or the Phlox family, has a very distinct long tube of the corolla, as I mentioned. Parts in five. So when we go to our key, it's not three, it's four or five. Parts in five. And it's radial. Any way I cut that flower, I can get a matching half. So it's radial. Then I, it asked me, is it a composite? a cluster of tightly you know groupings no you can see these are individual flowers i go down further and it says are there greater than 10 stamens that's the male parts inside or 10 or less i count this and i get five petals and then when i look at the stamens the male parts i count those and I get five of those and then we'll put up an illustration I have the stigmas which is the tip of the pistil the female part is branched into three so that's my flower arrangement and so I go with the key and it asks me are the petals fused or are they separate and these are obviously fused into a big uh, tube long tube then it asks me is the flowering inflorescence a racine that's shaped like a scorpion tail well no these are just straight vertical no scorpion tail so I go down further and it asks me if it has a long straight tube with three stigmas or is it the tube reflex bent back with one well these are obviously long and straight with three stigmas and these are the phlox family and if you notice so far in our key we haven't had to answer is it superior inferior how, how big is the ovary the nutlets and all those details in a big botanical key because we're working on the most common flowering families with the simplest approach we can have so here we have the phlox family with a long tube, parts in five, three stigmas, and this one here is the Scarlet Gilia, a very pretty hummingbird flower in the mountains of the west. All right, walking around in this little wet area, I found this particular plant, and I haven't mentioned it before, but when I did mention parts in threes versus four and five, the parts in threes are usually the monocots and this particular plant has parallel veins all the veins are parallel on the leaves and when I look at it it has the irregular flower and parts in three and and because of the the lower lip on the flower being large typically in lobed. I have a orchid here, uh, a, a, what was a habanaria, now plantotheris, and these are very common. You see these a lot in wetlands, and that is a monocot, parts in three, has a larger low, lower lip on one of the, uh, what would be, a, they're not called sepals, they're called tepals, and the parallel leaves of an orchid. Another plant that I have parts in three, but actually they're all tepals. There's six what looks like petals here. And the leaves have that parallel vein, so I must be in a monocot. And so when I look at the key, I have a radial flower, not irregular, but radial and parts in six and what it's going to ask me is do i have three 
uh, stamens, of which I do, and that puts me right in the iridaceae with things such as this uh, Cisrinchium, and they tend to have, they, they don't flower real long, but they leave these nice little, like, nutlets of capsules on terminal uh, parts of the uh, stem, and that is the iridaceae. Well, here is a very pretty wildflower that grows in the mountains in wet areas of the west, but it is a very good example of the Scrofulariaceae. Now, I'm well aware that the Scroff family has been separated into three or possibly four other families, but for teaching the most common plants uh, for wetlands, I'm going to be sticking to a little bit older nomenclature just because of the ease of separating all these. So in this case, when I look at the uh, flower, I can count parts of five. It's irregular. Actually, this is the uh, elephant's head. It has a nice trunk. The one uh, petal is almost like an elephant's trunk. It's a very pretty, pretty wildflower. And Parts in five, leaves are alternate, but in the scroffs it can be opposite, but unlike the mints, they're not aromatic and the stem is round. So, here we have a scrofulariaceae. If you get down through our key, parts in fives, it's bilateral, meaning it's not round shape, it's got a irregular shape to it. Stem is round, leaves in this case are alternate and non-aromatic and the stem is round and it keys right out to the Scrofulariaceae, a very common uh, family that you find a lot of these herbaceous things in various different types of wet meadows. But I wanted to show you the very nice uh, irregular flowers uh, that are bilateral in shape. You can only cut it one direction to get a matching half. And this is the monkey flower. And here in my other hand is a penstemon, one of the bearded tongues. And again, it shows the irregular flower of the scroffs with the round stems that are not aromatic in comparison to the mint family. Here we are, the next family, and I'm counting parts. I have five sepals, five petals. Stamens, I have ten and one pistil. And now I got a cluster of flowers, and it's going to ask this, is it a tightly large cluster of flowers? And that's asking for something in this type of category, which we don't have, or might also get you to these asters, which is a big composite of clustered flowers. Ours is just a little grouping at the top. So when I go to the key, it asks parts. Well, I go to five. You can't see it, but the flowers are radial, not irregular. I don't have a tight cluster of flowers and I go down and it asks me about the number of stamens. Well, it wants to know if I have more than 10 stamens or 10 or less and I have 10. Then the next question is are the petals fused and we don't have a long tube or fused section of petals or sepals. We have these are split all the way to the base. So they're free. And then when I look at the leaves, it's opposite. And so this is a typical Caryophyllaceae pink family that has parts in five. However, one, one other thing about that, sometimes the petals are split looking like 10. But if you go down further, you'll see that it's still one petal, but they're split. split. And so we have parts in five, ten stamens, one pistil, opposite leaves, and these are the sand star warts and uh, other sand warts of the Caryophyllaceae or the pink family. 
all right here we go we have to start by counting parts and I take this big cluster of flowers I find one flower and I count and I have parts in five and five stamens and um, the pistol has the two stigmas on top okay and the regular and we have that very unique umbrella humble look so I go to the key I jump down parts in five the flowers are radial they're not bi bilateral and I have one of these big compound heads and a lot of cluster of flowers and here I have that umbrella shape of the umbellifery or the APAC as it's known in a new name and versus the sunflower which would be a composite all in one flower where this has all these little branches holding up the umbel. So we have a lot of umbellifery that are in wetlands very easy to identify by this flower shape so quick review parts in fives and this big umble head is the umbellifery or APAC I'm gonna start this family by simply saying this inflorescence is like a scorpion tail scorpioid and this is the boraginaceae um, you, as I go down this whole inflorescence, I got a whole series of flowers going around like a scorpion tail. That's a telltale sign right off. And then when I look at the parts, I have parts in fives. And if I look into the throat, because this has a fused flower, I look down in there and I see little appendages. So if I walk this through our key, I have parts in five, radial flowered. I have stamens that are 10 or less. Petals are fused. These are fused. And when I look inside that very short tube, I see the appendages down in there. And that's the boraginaceae. Um, but the real field feature is a scorpioid head and typically these are alternate but typically they're very bristly stiff haired on the boragias and we have multiple genera and species in wetlands of the boraginaceae okay here is um, a family one of the two families we have for our most common families that parts are in four this is a uh, fireweed, epilobium, and if you count, I have four sepals, four petals, eight stamens, but it's four and four, and then the pistil's even divided into four, and in this case, it is, the ovary is inferior, it is below the plane of the sepals and petals, and versus we have a whole bunch of, <coughs> of these mustards, the brassicaceae. Uh, they too, and these are in fruit, have parts in four, but their ovary is superior. And a lot of times, many, many times, you see them in fruit. They have these smaller, there's a name, Salik, and then for the longer, narrow ones, Silicils, but you have these two different types of fruits in the mustards and these can range from being very weedy to uh, a lot of very uh, native and endemic species in, a, in the mustard family. So these two families, the Brassicaceae and the Onagraceae, have parts in four. Here's a uh, very unique uh, Calicortis, one of the western uh, members of the lily family. Uh, it's very photogenic inside and 
as a member of the lily family, it has parts in threes. Remember, it's a monocot, so it has the parallel veins, parts in three, and I have three sepals and three petals. But when I look inside, I don't even need a hand lens. I can see six stamens and a pistil that split three ways. And if I go to my key, it's radial, it's not lobed in any fashion, circular, and it's got uh, parts in threes, three sepals, three petals, but it's the six stamens for the liliaceae. Now the lilies have been split also, but again, for our purposes, to identify common stuff, I'm using some a little bit of the older nomenclature and all the new family arrangements. So this is the lily family, the Sago lily. Hummingbirds like these flowers with the long It has a big banner, two side wings, and I screwed it up again. <laughs>